everybody. I'm Hello, sick. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm injured. <laughs> and we are just the worst possible crew today. <laughs> Talks fall down, That's... go boom, and hurt himself. And I caught some bug from the petri dishes I call children. So, yeah, we're doing great. But nevertheless, it's another ep- another episode of uh, Teaching Talks Tech on the Bottle Rocket Gaming server. Uh, for those of you who uh, have just stepped into this little mini-series, or something much y'all in general, uh, this is actually a uh, attempt to enlighten talks as well as enlighten uh, all of you on some of the basics of uh, modded Minecraft, at least as it pertains to our server. Um, and uh, we've been working through the process of building up some technology for talks here in this wonderful little training center of talks. Uh, so we've gotten... Uh, Gone through a few phases here. We started out with some basic uh, uh, vanilla furnaces and upgraded to iron furnaces, and then we got our um, electrified stuff, including electric furnaces and compressors and macerators and so on. So we pretty much got him all set up in that regard. Now the downside to this is you've got a couple of uh, regular generators running it, which work fine, but they do chew up coal and wood or whatever it is you put in there and over time it gets annoying you have to keep refilling them constantly you can throw a hopper on it There's for example out. we're out now exactly <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and do an upgrade to his power system to help run these things a little better there's actually two things we're going to be doing uh first of all we're going to be uh upgrading the actual power generation to geothermal and the reason for that is geothermals have a good output um they're very strong, very, very efficient. As long as you can find lava to feed them, you're pretty much good. The second thing we're going to do is we're actually going to upgrade his power storage. Instead of having that little tiny buffer you'd have inside the uh, generators, we're actually going to put in some battery boxes. So it'll be a kind of like a bigger buffer for the machines to run on. That just gives you a little more to run with so that if, for example, things run out, you have a little buffer before the power runs out of it. So it's nice to have. Um... So yeah, so that's what we're going to be uh, hammering on today here. Now, to make our lives a little bit easier, uh, I went ahead and grabbed all the bits and bobs and parts and pieces we need, and I actually made sure that they're right and that they haven't been greg teched. <laughs> so, yay. And, uh, Talks, have you uh, taken a look at this stuff yet up here? I've taken a look. Alright, so first thing I'm, first thing I'm just going to do real quick here, I only needed... A few sheets of it is this tin plating. And tin plating, you put in a little plus pattern in the uh, crafting bench. You get uh, four empty cells. Empty cells are kind of an alternative to buckets in that um, they uh, will hold water or many other fluids of sorts. What's nice about these to, these canisters is that they actually will stack even when they're full. So. Hooray for that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the next thing we're going to do is the geothermal generators. Now, I've gotten the pattern laid out here in the chest. And Toxie, you can go ahead and uh, uh, snipe piss, bleh, a set of the stuff we have here, if you'd like. I'm just going to steal. I'm, I could have just stole half of this right here and been done with it, but no. Grab those two. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. So in the crafting oh, bench, uh, as you just saw, we're going to go ahead and reassemble that uh, layout here. And this will give us our geothermals. Now, the geothermals are technically a quote-unquote upgrade, if you will, to the generators. So that's why it uses the generators in its recipe, as well as some refined iron, those uh, empty cells and some glass. And that will give you a wonderful uh, geothermal generator. And it looks <laughs> bad. <laughs> and talks having problems. <laughs> no, that's just the, the, that's what it looks like the face uh-huh. is making. Yes. So from here, we're going to need to go ahead and pull a few things out here. What I want to do to help keep the power flow a little more even, some of you may have caught it last time when we mentioned it, but um, with the generators set up the way they are right now, it's always going to pull priority from the first generator because it's the shortest path. And like with many things in Minecraft, the shortest path is what gets used first. So as long as this generator has enough to run everything, it's just going to pull off that one. That can be beneficial, but I do like keeping things symmetrical in some sense or another. <laughs> so we're actually going to be pulling these guys out here. We're also going to be pulling these Amac uh, compressors out and moving them. 
uh, make room for the geos and the uh, battery boxes. Um, so to do this, I think the generators are pretty stable. You could probably pop those with a, a pickaxe and be, and be fine. When you start getting into the automated uh, machinery like the automatic compressors here, using a pickaxe is going to give you a better than average chance of getting a machine block back, which is bad news. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, a wrench. And I'm using Omni Wrench, and I believe the Omni Wrench will, in fact, uh, work, I hope. Oh, no. <laughs> nope. Nope. Rurik said it should. Uh, In the hmm. chat. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I just got this, like, beaten feeling like I hate right tech or something. I don't know. <sighs> <sighs> See, this is what should happen right here. You right-click once, it turns them, and you right-click again, they pop right out. Right. Theoretically, that's what should happen up here. Just really right-click and give them the turn and then pop them out. I've got a Rook's feeling, probably though, recording. Go crash this session. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who haven't uh, picked up on any of the other uh, Ball Rock gamers, we do have Rook88 on our server, and he pops on now, and then he's the guy that we played the little prank on with the bugs. Uh, definitely go see that and definitely see his uh, response video. I, I, I've got this I've got this sinking feeling we're going to need a Greg Tick wrench to actually make that happen. So for the moment here, I've got a wrench. We'll try this out and see what happens. Maybe I'm just dumb. All right, now I'm... Oh, there we go. Oh. Yeah, it looks like they... Both a bit back to you. Oh no, no, they're both fine. But yeah, apparently you gotta use Greg Tech wrench for Greg Tech stuff because they don't want to come off otherwise. <sighs> Greg! <laughs> for the record, for our next mod pack in 1.7, we are not, in fact, having Greg Tech as part of our mod pack. And technically, <laughs> it's got nothing to do with this. It's just too much of a pain to get it to work nicely with others. So, anyways. <laughs> okay, so, Tox, let's go ahead and throw our geothermals down. You're going to put yours on the top and I'll put mine on the bottom or vice versa or whatever. Whatever floats yeah. your boat here. I'll put mine on top. I'll just uh, I'll let uh, you put yours in. Oh, you look on top. All right. <laughs> just want to get a straight angle on that. Uh, that's interesting. The view I have of this is the uh, <laughs> the front of it's facing down. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what happened. Wait, let's try this. Yeah, so that one works fine. <laughs> interesting. All right. Anyways, there so the drills over there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make our bad boxes real quick. We'll get that out of the way while we can. I'm going to put the wrench away here before I forget. <laughs> so the bad boxes you see here, it's going to be some wood planks, a piece of copper, and then those wonderful RE bags that we've made before. Pretty simple process. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a, a few here. and Three of those. I'll grab uh, those two. I'll go ahead and grab these, a couple of those, there's uh, three of them for you. So you should have, once it's all said and done, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I need a copper cable. Five planks, a copper cable, and three RE batteries. Why am I missing a plank? Do you have six planks? Oh, yeah. Planks? You're a bad man. I thought I needed six for some reason. <laughs> talks, talks, talks. Lays recipes out yeah, for that's you. That's the furnace. You can't craft with that. Uh, what was Not this? Exact. So we're going to go ahead and put planks in the bottom three. And then in okay. slots one and three on the top. Go ahead and slap your cable in between the two boxes on top there. I don't there. have my cable. I think you stole that one. I didn't steal. It's probably still up there. Look at it. It's still there. It didn't show there. Uh, what? <laughs> I think you just put that back. And I think your coin just stole all my stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a day. Yeah. And it's only 2.30, too. Oh, boy. I have some wood planks. 2.30 for me. It's 1.30 for you. I'm still missing my planks. 
I've got all these these forestry bags. I swear, I love them to death, but there are honestly times when I just mm, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Okay, so you've got three RE batteries, you've got a copper cable, and you've got five planks, right? And I have a bet box in the outbox square. Yay! Output box. And today we teach talks how to speak English. It's kind of like Canadian, but with less A's in it. <laughs> Pretty lots tricky, of, eh? Lots of, lots of F's, though. <laughs> Kids, don't look that up. All right, so we got our back boxes. <laughs> please, don't, please don't look that up. Now the back box, I'm going to go throw it down here real quick so you can see it. Very, very, very critical, very important thing here. All of these sides here, these are all output sides. Or sorry, input sides. It's kind of blink plane. That guy right there. That's the one you want facing out. Is it the one with the orange circle? Mm-hmm. Okay, so once again, we're having a display problem that must be showing on the bottom for me. Oh, goody. <laughs> so, to that point, I can see it on the, it's gonna, the orange circle is going to face you. So in this case, if I wanted to put it up here, I don't want to be down under. Uh-huh. So the orange dot... Play yeah, see, now I see the orange dot in front. I want it on front. I want it under. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn it. There we go. <laughs> okay. So use a wrench to turn it to wherever you want. For the wrench, you can actually click on the spot you want the dot to show. Or you can shift-click on the opposite side you want it to show. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, so if I have the, for example, uh, the orange dot facing forward, I can be up here and shift-click, and that will force the orange dot down. Okay. So if you ever can't get to a face, that's an easy way to get around it. So these things should be set right. I'm going to just go ahead and cheat a little bit here and take that cable out. <laughs> I don't see orange dot on top. What? What? No. The visual glitch thing. I saw that. It's starting to get annoying. I'm sure you did. I'm sure it's orange dot is on top. top. Okay, so there we go. So basically the, the generators here are going to feed from the sides of the boxes. And then the uh, box is going to feed out through the cable. Oh, it's okay. Do double duty because the generators can feed through the cable as well. Yeah. But this way, like I said, they'll be able to top off the battery boxes and all be able to feed out. And now, since the battery boxes are closer than the generators, they'll be tapped right. first for power before the generators are. Bada bing, bada boom, everything's good. World's happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that... Not yet. <laughs> not yet, no. So the geothermals, like I said, they're really handy because they can run on lava. However, we don't have any lava up on top of a mountain here. That's kind of a problem. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and dive into a whole new mod to help us out here. And that mod's going to be Buildcraft. Now, with Buildcraft, it's kind of claiming the fame, so to speak, is that it actually... Um, it actually runs... Uh, pipes everywhere and pipes are a wonderful wonderful thing um we can run pipes for power we can run pipes for um liquids we can also run pipes for items so we'll begin to a lot of that in terms of automation real fun stuff so for this particular instance though we're actually going to use the pipes for liquid we're actually going to be able to pump lava up from where the lava pools are up to the generators so to start with we're going to need to make ourselves a pump and first things first we're going to do is we're going to need to upgrade um, a stone gear to an iron gear. Now, if you've watched past episodes, you remember we made a wooden gear, which was four sticks, and then we upgraded that with four cobblestone around it, and now we're going to upgrade it again and get ourselves a, uh, uh, an iron gear. So Tox, you want to go ahead and grab uh, four iron there. Okay. And then while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and grab... Uh, well, actually, let's go make those real quick here. They're super quick and easy. So gear in the middle, irons, north, south, east, and west on there. And you got yourself a nice iron gear. Huzzah. Tiny. Put away all this extra stuff here. My inventory is always just an absolute cluster mess. So I usually end up having my inventory dumped into a chest and get a soaring chest. Yay! <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, in any eye here, I'm going to look up a pump real quick just so I can show you guys. Now there are di many different types of pumps out there. There's a industrial craft pump which we're not using but then there's also a uh, 
uh, Buildcraft pump, which we are using. Now, the Buildcraft pump is a very fundamental uh, device and used to pump liquids. Uh, but that's actually crafted by making a mining well and a uh, glass tank from Buildcraft. Now, a glass tank is just that's a glass tank. It's, it's a physical embodiment of a bucket in a sense. Uh, I think it holds like s eight or 16 buckets, I think. I can't remember. <laughs> um, but uh, that's basically, you, you can place it down and you can have a lava store, if you will. And we can actually do some cool stuff with that later. Now, the mining well itself, the mining well is actually a Buildcraft uh, mini miner, if you will. You place it down, you give it some power, and it'll actually drill down into the ground and uh, just within a one by one hole will basically mine out everything that's there and if you put a chest next to it it'll pump everything out uh, into that chest not very helpful unless you do some other cool automation with other mods but nevertheless we do need that so to start off with we're going to go ahead and make one of those now you'll see in the bottom left we have here we have the layout for that miner so it's just literally uh, six iron Stripping both sides, some redstone and a pickaxe, and we're going to put that gear right in the middle of it all. So I'm going to go ahead and steal half the iron here and a pickaxe and one of the redstone. So again, just uh, strip both sides with iron. Whoops. What the heck? Oh, Blame Greg. Right. <laughs> I saw a new recipe pop I hadn't seen before. All right, rest on top, pick on the bottom, and then gear right in the middle. That'll give us a mining well. And I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, half the glass here. And again, the glass tank is just a uh, regular vanilla glass blocks in a circle all the way around, and I'll get you the tank. So basically a glass chest. Yeah, pretty much. And then finally, last but not least, you put that tank on top of the miner, and you got a pump. Hooray! Yeehaw. Now, the pumps themselves are really handy because it will pump stuff out. Lava, water, you name it, the pumps will pump it. Um, what's not so handy about them is they are not powered. They cannot do this themselves. So we're going to have to make some power for them. Now, luckily, pumps don't take much power at all. So we're going to go ahead and make ourselves our first bit of uh, build craft powering systems. And that's going to be using a redstone motor. A redstone motor is a three planks on top, a piece of glass in the middle, and then a piston and a couple of wooden gears to get you going. So go ahead and grab that there. Now, redstone, redstone motors are the cheapest of motors because they just turn on with a redstone signal and they run. That's about it. Very, very cheap, very easy, no big deal. Um, the downside to them is they are extraordinarily weak. So for doing things like running a pump, they work fine. For siphoning items out of a chest via Billcraft pipes, they work just fine. If you want to power bigger machinery, however, they are just about worthless unless you want to make an absolutely ridiculous amount of them. So bear that in mind. <laughs> so that's pretty much uh, what it boils down to with them. Now, the last piece of the puzzle we're going to need here is we're going to need some actual build craft pipes. So I'm going to go ahead and take half the stacks you see here of stuff, which is the cobblestone, glass, and the uh, waterproofing. Now, build craft pipes come in a variety of, of flavors. Everything from cobblestone to stone to iron to diamond to gold and so on. And they have some different attributes. Cobblestone is the slowest pipe in the game. And when you put this recipe in here with just the uh, cobblestone and the glass by itself, you're going to get the regular transport pipes. You can go ahead and grab all those. And it will make a lot of them. And then from there, what we're going to be doing is taking the waterproofing, putting on top of those pipes, and then you'll get some waterproof pipes, which are for liquid. Oh, it's logic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have a lot of pipe left over, just for yeah. the record. So we'll get some more waterproofing, and we'll get those things. I'm sure we're going to need a lot more just a stack of pipes here. But nonetheless. I think, okay, some, you need cactus green for that waterproofing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some in the middle. Good. Well, we'll put these pipes up here for now. So... Basically, what it boils down to is you got your little pump here. I'm just going to set it down just for a sample's sake. And then you'll have uh, the pipe coming on. The pipe can come on any side. I usually just put it on top because it's easy. 
and you'll have the uh, the lava coming out of that, and the electric motors, or sorry, your wrist motors, will be coming off of the side here, like that. Right. That's going to be the setup. So now what we got to do is find some lava, get this little pump over them, and we'll get the wrist motors plugged in. We'll probably make another couple wrist motors while we're at it, because they can accept up to four, and that gets to go mm. and pump it a little bit faster. So we'll go ahead and make some more pipe here. We'll make a couple more motors, and we'll find ourselves a lava pit, and then we'll uh, see you guys in a minute. And welcome back, everybody. Ah, I thought that way there. Uh, so, yeah, I got some... Uh, uh, got ourselves a little pool here. We had ourselves a little malfunction, but it's been corrected. So we're going to get this uh, pump uh, taken care of. And Ruro is asking questions. What does he need? Uh, Yankee's place. Um, so we're going to put this pump up here. Now, normally, I want to find the, the deepest point in the pool because the pump will only drain to the level it can reach. can't drain below that. Um, it does drain a really big area, though, so that's nice to have. Um, so just for the sake of simplicity here... <laughs> ah, there's a deep one. Oh, yeah. A little trough right there, so... Your hat! My, my hat is on fire! All right, so we're going to put that's the pump right I, here. That's all that's left of you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, pump right about here. So what I'm gonna do is get myself some materials. I'm actually going to put the pump just right on the bottom of this, like this. Hopefully that worked. Yeah, the first time I've ever seen the bottom of a pump. Oh, oh, it's already coming out here. Let me out. <laughs> oh, so, so you. Okay. Pump's got a little animation, as you can see. Now, again, it is not like powered, this. so we're going to need to power it here. And to do that, we're going to use our little redstone motors. So we're going to slap them motors on the side of the pump here. Oh, uh, hell. <laughs> now, motors <laughs> technically can do that. They can actually stack on each other. However, you usually try to stay away from that just because um, if a motor... Yeah, you better turn that on. Um, if a motor actually uh, gets overdriven by other motors, it can actually cause an explosion. Even redstone motors. Um, but you can stack them up a little bit. I've, I've played around with them. I haven't had any time to do anything, anything scientific to get the exact, you know, how much you can get away with, so to speak. So we got that there. We found our way up to uh, Tox Place. We're actually going to run the pipe up inside there. So I'm going to grab a stack of pipes here. And since I can hover with this awesome jetpack of mine, one actually has power. <laughs> sort of pipe off here. Now there's one little thing we forgot. Well, I guess what it is, Tox. Um. If oh, are... levers. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, these are uh, redstone motors. You have Resto a forestry motors. bag and a, and a digger's bag. Anything in there? Actually, you know what? That's a that's a darn good point, sir. Or at least in the forestry bag, because we got a bunch of cobble here. Uh, again, turn off. <coughs> There we go. I still got some wood there. Hey, look at that. I'm I'm almost a Boy Scout. <laughs> there you go. Make some levers. Okay. Let's make some magic. The redwood wood does not uh, have that little trick with the uh, double stacking logs. Six. Yeah. Oh, that's a convenient. <laughs> not the end of the world, but hey. So while you get those done, I already got some blocks put in. You just put the levers right on the blocks between the two motors. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, make it a little easier. There goes my pick, <laughs> and I forgot to check a coin. <laughs> <laughs> I went to reiterate. That pick was one. He's broken, and I'm sick, so we're not going to work too well here today. <laughs> All right. Uh, from here, oh. it's going to be a simple process. Uh, I need a coin. Simple process of getting the pipe back up to Tox's place now. Because of the location we're at, it's going to be a big of a long run. Not a big deal. It's just a matter of getting enough pipe to do it. So we're going to go ahead and start running this pipe back here. I'll talk to those levers going. And do you oops. want me to turn the levers on? Yep. Might as well. Okay. Luckily, pipes don't pour liquid out, so we're not going to be in <laughs> harm's way or anything. That, that was my <laughs> concern. If that, if, 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 if that were possible with just straight up pipes, I'd, I'd, I would say I have another prank for Rourke, but. <laughs> I think. Well, to be fair, I told him he should, uh, um, in, on the Cranky Craft server, he should ship off a bunch of, uh, a bunch of poppies to somebody's base from his Iron Golem farm. 
Nice. The Cranky Guy server, people, if you haven't uh, watched anybody from the Cranky Guy server, definitely uh, go check them out. They're a fun group of people. I'd love to have them on. Uh, Bark Gaming for Modified. But right now they're playing the uh, the Rourke Craft, uh, what is it? Uh, Attack of the B Attack Team. Attack of the B Team. That's right. All right, so from here we got to go up. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, whoops. I'm going to try to get up here. Or I'm going to get blocked by... All right, fine, oh, you sorry. put it up there. I'll just stay down here. I didn't want to well, go up this is anyway. Tech, I should probably do this, uh, get some practical hands-on experience with placing pipes. <laughs> so while he pillars up the uh, pipe here, I'm going to go ahead and spiral on around. Oh, Mind if go. I uh, get some more pipes here? I was going to say, let me get some uh, <laughs> the rest of the ones I got here for you. There's yes. those, there's those, there's those. And that's probably not even going to be close to enough, but hey. I'll this is why I'm glad I can make sand. Up. You need glass for this. Uh, and and lots for glass, of you need sand. Whoop. That sounds like sunlight. Sound? Sa Ow. Sounds like sunlight. <laughs> there you have it, people. We have figured out what sunlight sounds like. Alright, so we're going to need to cut <laughs> up. A text and, message oh my good heavens, this is going to be an interesting, interesting path, my friend. This is going to be an interesting path. <laughs> Um, oh, are we poking out? Yeah, I need to where out. are we? Let's go. I tell you what, peeps, we'll go ahead and get the uh, pipe finished up here, and then we'll come on back and show you the uh, finished here. results. We'll be uh, right back, and welcome back, everybody. And the lava has finally caught up to us, so we finally got the uh, pipe uh, all the way run up here, and I did a little bit, of, a little bit of loop de loop and whatnot. Had to come from right by here, over this part of the hill, up into here. Through this side, back through around here, woo, as I fall down, <laughs> and then finally, eventually making a left, coming up, and bada bing. So, long story short, long, weavy pipe. Um, but the nice thing is, you got the infrastructure in now, talk. So, when you're down under there, if you find other pools, you can just tie into this pipe and run everything up. Now, I okay. went ahead and pulled There's the. There's no up. direction, direction yeah. released? Nope. They, okay. You can tie the maze you want in. Pretty much, pretty much is a whatever's pushing versus whatever's pulling. So you can just tie pipes in, no worries. Um, okay. So I open up the back of the wall here, just because the we're a small room and everything we've got laid out, pay to move everything. So this is the back of the generators. We're gonna go ahead and put some pipes coming out of those, if you could. Everything too. Put one back up here. There we go. Thanks. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some tanks in here. Now what's nice about these is we can. Go ahead and get these tanks lined up. <laughs> All the way to the top here. And these are going to allow you to have that wonderful buffer of lava. Right. And my little, my little daughter is less than happy today. <laughs> she feels about as happy as I do. I think she's got the same thing I do. <laughs> so, unfortunate as that is. But nonetheless, so we're gonna looks like I fill up here. So this tank is basically gonna hold on to all that lava pumping out, and then we're gonna be able to go ahead and take uh, the pipes off of here, and we'll put some little those redstone motors on them, and we'll just have them pump basically out of this tank into the generators. So go ahead and get a couple extra uh, pipes. Uh, actually, you no, know we really need. I just realized that's yeah. not gonna work. I aim at a dunce. <laughs> <laughs> So, I said earlier, we have many different types of pipes from uh, BuildCraft, and they actually have some different functions. The cobblestone pipes are kind of your utilitarian pipes. There's also, um, oh, God, I'm brain, having brain freeze here, uh, stone pipes from Smooth Stone. Now, oh. the difference between the two is st stone pipes are slightly faster for item transport. I mean, very slightly faster. But what's really important about them is that when you put stone pipes side by side with cobblestone pipes they don't connect so that's a nice perk so you can actually keep your lines separated if you need to now some other types of pipes we have here we have wooden transport pipes and they're made the same way as uh, the cobblestone pipes that use wood instead now the point of these guys here is that these guys can actually uh, pull items out of chests or pull fluids out of tanks. 
Okay. Do we need to waterproof these? Yes, we do. You're absolutely correct. I see some waterproof there. So we're going to want to waterproof those. I only need two of them, but I'll make a bunch of them because you'll probably need them later. All right. And the last piece of the puzzle we're going to need, I forgot about, <laughs> we're going to need some redstone motors. <laughs> so we'll have to get those put in place. So I was going to put the water, wood pipe like that. And those wood, parts ori wood pipes orientation is going to be the solid side pulling out. So you'll see in this case here, it self-orients right. because it's next to the tank. And you can see that's where it's going to pull out from. So we need to power these. And again, the most common way to do is with redstone motors. There are other ways to do this. However, we will get into that later. For the moment here, we're just going to go ahead and get some redstone motors. And we'll just go ahead and go that route. Do we have any left over? I, I, I don't think what we over. needed for that. We needed uh, wood. Wood, pistons, a few other things. I'll tell you what. I'll be right back and with those motors here. Uh, in the meantime, just to give you an idea of all the different pipes we have in this wonderful, wonderful world, um, there are iron pipes. And iron pipes are directional pipes. Those pipes, when you put them on something, they will uh, only flow in one direction. This is especially helpful if you have multiple pipes coming together and you want to make sure items go the right way. This would be a way to collect items. Iron pipes also have the little perk that they are redstone reactive. So if you have an iron pipe hooked to two different pipes, you can actually get the toggle, the direction between them. So that way you can actually have control over where things go. That's another nice little feature to have. Um, redstone, let's look at some motors here. I'm over at our uh, main uh, workshop here. Redstone engine. Yeah, we do have one left over. And we'll go ahead and craft more about it. This, uh, our AE system has pretty much most of the basic recipes and a whole bunch of others. There we go. Got a couple motors here. So iron pipes are really helpful for organization and direction, uh, flow direction and whatnot. Uh, really good in high places. From there, you've also got uh, sandstone pipes. Sandstone pipes will not connect to anything other than another pipe. So if you need to bypass a chest without touching it, sandstone pipes are very handy for that. Nice. Very nice to have. Uh, and then some other basic ones you have are the gold pipes. Uh, which will speed things up the going through them for items. Yeah, those, are sweet. they also have a higher fluid capacity than regular pipes. And then finally, diamond pipes. And diamond pipes are organizational pipes. You can actually put a diamond pipe down, and you can tell all six different directions that have different colors. You can tell it basically by filters where items go. So it's a great sorting pipe. So Those are nice. Uh, levers? I can make some more. <laughs> so we're going to get some levers and uh, get those set up. And I'm going to go ahead and put these motors on. I have some more. Right on my hot bar. Let me see here. Is there any benefit to any way? Nah, not really. Let's go ahead and throw more here. Now, motors usually do kind of self-orient, which is handy. Um, <laughs> most of the time. But you can turn them with a wrench. Let's go ahead and put the lever on that. Now, these guys are going to start drawing... As you can see here, now Billcraft pipes, as you can see, they don't really have a care about where the level of lava is at. So it's a little bit of a cheaty system in this regard. Most other tank systems, right. like iron tanks from Railcraft and so on, will in fact be upset if you try to pull higher than the actual fluid level is at. These, we don't have to worry about. But long yeah. story short, you've now got this thing set up. You've got a, a buffer reservoir for lava that pump is pushing into. And then you've got... Uh, these guys pulling lava into the generators. And then from there, these guys are going to fire up, as you can see. There we go. And you should see the bat box is filling up now. That's not the bat box. Uh huh. There you go. 32 EU per tick. So now you've got a maximum 62 EU per tick coming out of that. means you can run a whole bunch of these guys. All these guys have different variants in terms of what they can run, how they work. Um,. But they'll, they'll both run for a while here. And then usually what I end up doing, again, just as kind of a backup utility, is I'll take uh, at least one of the generators we have here. And the cheap trick is, I just go ahead and plug it right up there. That way, worst case scenario, if the la lava runs dry and you really need to have your machines running for some reason, you can just go ahead and um, basically post some, there. post some coal in there. Get things running under limited capacity. Just get yourself going again. And once you get find yourself a new uh, pipe to run or a new area to run to, then you can go ahead and uh, 
get your lava generators back online again. So, How long do you think it will take before that uh, particular lava pool will run out? It is completely dependent on how often you use the machines. And this is one of the critical things about uh, IC I really love, is that they don't waste power. See, that generator just popped off, because oh, now yeah. it's full up. Now remember, this generator here is only going to power up this bat box. Mm -hmm. This one here is going to power up this one. These cables are linked to the outputs of these bat boxes. These generators are independent of each other for powering up those battery boxes. Right. And there you go. And it's kind of flashing on right now because yep. it's trying to power the e-furnace. Exactly. So right now what you have is this bat box is taking precedence over the other one. The e-furnace is running, and so it's pulling just a little bit of power. <laughs> so this thing only flips on just long enough to top off the battery box, and then it pops right back off again. So they're incredibly right. efficient in that regard. You get a lot more power out of them. And likewise, with these guys right here, they're going to pull lava in until there's no more room. And once uh -huh. uh, they're full, the motors will continue to run, but there's nothing wasted because they run redstone. And those keep everything topped off for you. Now, that said, how much uh, lava you're going to have down there, I don't know. As you can see, there's nothing else flowing. <laughs> so from here, <laughs> it's just going to be a matter of you running around finding different pools of lava, which is pretty easy to do with this uh, map of ours. We can't see where the pools are. And you just run an extension out, put a second pump up, and then the first one di dries up, pull that one down. Go ahead and move it to a third spot, and so on and so forth. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. Had a little uh, problem with recording, so I uh, got kind of cut off at the end there with talks. But uh, just wanted to wrap up and uh, say that, uh, as always, uh, we certainly thank you for the time and watching the video. And uh, you can always uh, uh, leave comments down below if you have anything to say or questions to be asked. Uh, you also, of course, can hit the like button. Like buttons do help me out. Because you know what's going on, as well as gives me a little promotion and, and ranking, which isn't going to be a lot, but, you know, a little better than nothing. And, of course, as I've said many, many, many times before, if you like the shows, please do subscribe. I do try to on it when I can. I have been very busy. I've not had a lot of time to do uh, recording, unfortunately. But I do put up as much as I possibly can, so uh, look forward to that. Um, always, 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 if you guys have time, please do feel free to stop by the uh, Ball Rocket Gaming uh, website that's ballrocketgaming.com uh please feel free to sign up on the website there and uh post in the uh groups in the forums uh which do like the uh the conversation in there and that is the main place where us ball rocket gamers tend to jabber back and forth and you'll be able to see some uh behind the scenes or how the sausage is made so to speak in terms of uh planning and what we're doing on the server uh, and of course uh, if you're interested in modded minecraft and would like to see be a part of the server uh, please feel free to stop by uh, our gaming.com slash forums and uh, go ahead and submit an application to uh, become whitelisted on our server uh, we are a whitelist server we are pretty strict about it because we do have people on here that like to record and want to have a good experience uh, that said uh, please feel free uh, to fill us in on who you are and we'll get a chance to talk with you and find out if you're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for you so again thank you so much for your time i certainly do appreciate it and have yourselves a good one bye